Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the NHL 94 podcast. I am your host, Len the Legend, and today I'm going to be going into the world of Super Nintendo. This is a, a knockoff for the PC. I have the legitimate one in the next room here. But yeah, we'll be talking a little bit about Super Nintendo over here because I have with me one Bob Kodalski. And uh, since we like to be more formal, I'm going to call you Robert Kodalski, if that's okay, Bob. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Bob. Uh, it's going to be a good time. We'll have some fun. I, this is going to be a deep dive into something I'm not too familiar with because you've heard my show before and I talk fondly of Genesis. And um, my only experience with NHL in the SNES world was NHL PA 93. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, but we, before we go we anywhere, well, it, it, I, I found that to be, well, We'll talk about that in a bit. I just, <laughs> you're here. People want to listen to you. They don't want to listen to me. So maybe before we go any further, Robert Kodalski, we uh, can give a little background about who you are and who is Bob Kodalski and why should I keep you in a starting lineup when I pick the Senators? Oh, well, thanks for having me. Um, you can call me Bob K. And um, apologies to the real Bob Kodalski because this might come up, uh, you know, in his feed or if he's searching himself, Googling himself. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's a tribute to you, Bob. And uh, I know that uh, you have far more skill than me. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm not uh, uh, entirely sure why you chose me, but I feel honored. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure if people really want to listen to me, but uh, I will do my thing. And, and uh, hopefully we don't get into... Uh, too much debate over the the Sega versus uh, Super Nintendo thing. Oh, I'm ready to drop gloves. Uh, but then again, I turtled the first opportunity, so just be ready. But I've heard you. I've heard you talk fondly about the uh, Super Nintendo controller, which is also one of my favorite uh, uh, functional items. It just it's it, a, the form. Just and I know this is a knockoff, but it's just absolutely and it fits so well in my hand. And I would imagine playing NHL would work well. Um, probably better than the Genesis, even the, the three or six button controller, but not just the controller itself. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you're an any SNES fan too. I love, 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 love the SNES for a variety of yeah. reasons. It's um, my favorite system for sure. Like that's the, that is the era where I was a big gamer and that is the era that I think of. It's just like the perfect uh, sort of sandwich between the really basic uh, NES and the Pong stuff and the more advanced stuff where they were trying to uh, do three more 3D uh, and realism stuff uh, that um, ended up feeling just kind of fake to me and uh, clunky and uh, SNES kind of nailed the the gameplay I think and uh, just the the bright colors and the sound and everything and as you said the controller is probably the best controller uh, ever created. I love the feel of it and the games on it. I mean, I, I know we're here talking about NHL, but let's talk about the greatness of SNES while we're here. You know, we could talk about Super Mario World, which the theme on that game is phenomenal. The ending theme is still like nostalgic for me, extremely nostalgic for me. And Super Mario Kart, um, Super Mario RPG, oh, yeah. Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3 in North America. I know in worldwide it's 4 and 6. Um, Earthbound. The list goes on and on with games for SNES. It, like it is Ken a, Griffey. Ken I Griffey never baseball. Played, I never played that. <laughs> it was that actually it's pretty uh, great. Comparable to something like RBI, which I know that was eight bit, but people love uh, RBI. And it's I too more. Love it. It's more arcadey. So if you ever see um, Ken Griffey presents Major League Baseball for Super Nintendo, the original one, uh, the players are like these big bulked up like roided up uh kind of batters and then you have the little skinny batters so there's like a huge uh range there it's very cartoony but it's uh it plays really well and uh we still have tournaments and we have uh we have a league going online uh yes, Discord really for, for griffey um so yeah we like that and um i was also big into all the other you know super nintendo games like f-zero and SimCity. uh i even had the mario paint with the the mouse that I is, remember that. <laughs> I've seen um, a video. I think Angry Video Game Nerd did a video on that and showed it off. It, yeah, it's it's interesting to say the least. And F Zero, I'm not sure if you tried out the. There's a new version they released for the Switch, 
I think they call it F zero ninety nine or something like that. It's, I forget exactly. What, and you're playing with a whole bunch of other players. It's it, pretty good. Give it a shot if you're an F zero fan because uh, it might bring up some good memories or bad memories too, depending on how you look at it. But I'm curious, how the heck did you come across and get into NHL ninety four? Well, um, I guess so. I was born in eighty, so I was kind of um, in the early nineties. I was at that sort of preteen stage where you're interested in uh, sports cards and the sport card boom hit. And so I was big into, uh, you know, pro set and upper deck cards and baseball cards as well. Um, and then for Christmas, I still remember getting NHL PA 93 for the Super Nintendo. And I remember, you know, opening the wrapper and uh, looking at the box art and they had the, uh, the real pictures right on there of like, I think it was like Neely and Bork and, uh, Belfort, Chelios, and I was like, wow, they actually made a video game with the guys from my upper deck cards, and now I can play as them. That's That kind of blew my mind. Um, so I was pretty excited. Um, yeah, the frame rate of that game is uh, extremely low, and it's super clunky and choppy if you've played it. Um, but it was still cool. Like, the fighting was cool. Um, the hitting, the sounds, like, just to be able to play uh, as you know, it's pretty amazing. I never played the Sega Genesis version, uh, but uh, I was a Super Nintendo guy. But uh, when 94 came out, I think a neighbor brought it over, and I was like, "What is? why is there a 94? Like, we have we have this game. It's 93. What, what are they going to do? Like, put one out every year? That's crazy. <laughs> but sure enough, that's exactly what they did, and I think mm -hmm. uh, EA has done quite well with that uh, idea. So, um yeah, I was pretty pretty pumped when I played it and saw sort of the improved gameplay. One timers was obviously a huge thing, mm -hmm. and um, played played that quite a bit. Um, and then I got 95, 96 on Super Nintendo. Kind of switched over to I had 99 on the 64 and 64, and then I went PC for a few years there. Um, but I kept going back to 94 every once in a while. Like I, if I was bored and I thought, what game can I play? Well, that one played pretty well. It was like pretty unique. It was kind of on its own. It wasn't like 93 and it wasn't like 95. It just had the best gameplay and it was the most fun. So I used to do playoffs and sort of do pen and paper, keeping stats. I remember doing the Nordiques and Sakic would go on a playoff run, you know, best of seven, and he'd get like 150 points. I remember I'd do like little <laughs> tallies. Um, and then I guess uh, kind of got away from the NHL games. And then around 2008, I think it was, I was just Googling and I found the forums. And um, I was pretty excited to see that people were still talking about this game and then realized that people were actually playing against each other online. And um, was able to uh, set things up. And at that time, I think we were, we were using like America online instant messenger or something like that to talk and um, some old uh, software to, uh, to play the game. I think it was called SNES battle or Zed SNES or something like that. Yeah. I remember um, that. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, got into it and um, I guess never looked back. He's I've been playing with emulators since like the late nineties, in fact, and more so arcade emulators. But I then, even in the early two thousands, I was playing all the different uh, Genesis turbo graphics. And S so I remember SNES one. So I remember those, those two names that you referenced, but NHL PA 93, the guy across the street from me had it. And I remember playing before that, the NHL hockey on the Genesis or NHL 92, as people call it. And that game, the NHL 92, was, sorry, NHL hockey was incredible. If I remember the first time I saw it on the Genesis, it was, you know, from that point, it was like a huge jump in terms of where we used to play with uh, NES ice hockey or NES Blades of Steel. And then when my friend got NHL PA on the SNES, I remember watching it and man, oh man, it was just very choppy. You were referencing the, um, the frame rate. But from what I've been reading, the people that were behind it and programmed it, they had a very limited time frame in which they could have pumped up the product. Somebody was referencing upwards or even as low as three weeks they had to basically do everything. That's an incredible feat. I'm not sure if you heard that story before, but in order to do something from scratch with a very small window and put out a product, which 
you know, we, we could debate how bad it is. It's still something that's in your eyes. It sounds like you have some, you had a good time with it, but did you ever hear that story about them putting out the software in just a very short period of time they, in terms of programming it? Yeah. I mean, I heard it was kind of like a rushed port of the, the Sega version. I don't know about the three weeks, but I, I believe it if, if they did that quickly, but yeah, that's pretty impressive if that is the case. Cause I mean, there's still something about that game. Um, that I remember fondly, like it, it actually reminds me of Christmas, the NHL PNA3. Yeah, I, remember, no, you know, I just, understand what you're trying to get at. <laughs> and the, just like the sounds, the, the hitting, like it's, it is, it's kind of cool. You can hit a guy who does a full somersault, like, you know, 30 feet into the boards. And uh, the fighting has its own like sort of momentum. Like it's really well done, actually. Um, I got, um, I got uh, convinced to join a 93 league last year actually and i was told it was the genesis version i was told that it was the same as the super nintendo version so i joined it but it's it's not at all actually it, it does play differently like not only the frame rate but it plays differently and uh we decided i think we weren't going to do another league actually we we're just like why are we why are we wasting our time <laughs> on this? there's no one timers well, so, yeah nothing venture nothing gain at least you gave it a shot and you scratched an itch that you probably would have been hoping to scratch your whole life so that's been done um when you first got into 94, are, are, were you playing with your friends or were you the only person in the area that was playing the the game or like, what's the story there? I guess I played a little bit with my brother um, and maybe the, the I mentioned uh, the neighbor that I mentioned there, but um, not a whole lot with my friends. I do remember in high school, actually, when I was, I guess it would have been around 97 or 98. I used to play with one friend uh, in particular uh, in his uh, his uh, pool room at his parents' house uh, before we'd go out for the night. So we actually would play. He preferred 95, but if I could convince him to play 94, we, we would certainly do that. And uh, whoever scored, um, the other guy would have to do a shot of whiskey. So we got extremely inebriated, um, and uh, I would not recommend doing that. Uh, we had some pretty bad nights that started off lots of fun playing uh nhl um so yeah i played with that friend and then like i said i just ended up playing a lot on my own in later years because i don't have a lot of friends that want to play super nintendo <laughs> luckily you can find them now online just at a drop of a hat that want to play nhl 94 regardless if it's genesis or super nintendo what are your thoughts on nhl 95 um so i yeah like i said i played that a lot with with my friend and and it's it's not bad like it's a fun game in its own right but it, it is completely different and i would certainly obviously prefer nhl 94 but 95 on super nintendo i think it is pretty similar to the sega version they, um, they are 95 and beyond but, they're mm -hmm. the 16-bit consoles are the same game essentially yeah but there's there's something like you don't have that momentum feeling when you're skating that like sort of fluidity you guys take a little a second to kind of stop and get going the other way like on 95 they're more sort of skating on rails you can just like turn up the you know drop of a hat and uh, stop on a dime sort of thing um but uh still a lot of fun like i remember it being really fast actually so like some super fast one timers but i also remember their sticks looked um way too long or something their sticks were always sticking out like, like they were like 10 feet long or something almost like you're playing rod hockey you know with the big sticks it, it just doesn't look right nhl 94 does like you got to see the jr behind me but if you look at the the sprites or the graphics from 95 they just don't for whatever reason now you and i are very much different because i have never played nhl 94 ever on super nintendo i played 93 on super nintendo but i've never played nhl i've seen video of it but that's as far as i've gone and you on the other hand have played a handful of games on the genesis is that correct yeah um i probably my first time playing uh 94 on genesis was probably around like 2010 or so when i had been on the forums for a while playing other guys super nintendo and they thought oh why don't i try this genesis thing like a lot of people seem to really like it so there must be something to it and um just did not really enjoy it i kind of questioned how so many people prefer that and i still question it i go back to it every couple years um to give it a shot 
and like on my own i don't play anyone but just on my own and uh i remember why i don't play it and i'm sure it's a great game obviously but like i i only play nhl 94 for super nintendo like i don't i'm not a big gamer and so i just that's my game i dedicate my time to it and i don't i don't really uh i don't really want to learn genesis but some of the other uh super nintendo guys have gotten into genesis and they seem to be uh really enjoying it and they're doing better and better every year it seems so good for them not for oh, me yet yeah. well that, that's it's a good interview thank you very much for everybody for listening this has been one dog right. just kidding um <laughs> yeah, maybe on, on the what you do know could you outline some of the differences between the two games because you've played them i haven't i've been reading about the differences i could rhyme them off but maybe you have a little bit more first-hand experience than i do just in case anybody out there is kind of like me and wondering what is the difference between the two games they're both 16-bit consoles they're both nhl 94 they're the same game right no and maybe you could give the uh, the rundown yeah. for that completely different um I know you've talked about this with the other guys, but I'll give my perspective. Mm -hmm. So you, you've probably, like a lot of guys from the Genesis side of things, they always reference um, the frame rate, obviously. So Genesis is very smooth uh, for NHL 94. Super Nintendo is a little bit choppy. Like it's not it's not a choppy game by any means, but it, the frame rate is definitely lower. I think it's um, 30 or Chaos was saying maybe 45. Um, so certainly the frame rate, <clears throat> um i find the colors are quite different so mm -hmm. maybe it's me but i really prefer the super nintendo colors i just find they the probably the palette is maybe broader and the colors really pop more to me and you have kind of like a very light pale blue ice as opposed to more of like a blue or green teal. teal ice yeah. yeah um the the theme songs are different i prefer the super nintendo theme song i know people love the the sega version but the uh, super nintendo one uh slaps in my opinion um i guess uh in terms of other uh differences super nintendo control wise well you have the super nintendo controller which is kind of unbeatable um you have the paddle buttons left and right for defense control so you can switch between right and left defensemen you have a quicker goalie control from what i understand um uh, a lot of sega guys say there's bugs in Super Nintendo. The main one I think that comes up is the Y button, which is the hooking or flip the puck button. If you get hit, you can press that and your guy immediately pops up and can hook the player that hit him. Um, I don't see that as a huge deal, to be honest. Like I never even did that and I had success never doing that. So it's not like this this big sort of um, you know, advantage that you can you can use like to 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 bug you know be a bugger and uh and cheat the opposition or anything because um the hook uh it doesn't always get the guy it doesn't always hook the guy so all of a sudden then your guy's just hooking air and you're busy hooking and the play is going on somewhere else you know so it doesn't always work so there's risks i think in doing that um the one timers you can actually aim in super nintendo yes. which i think is pretty sweet um passing is more accurate um people say it's more arcadey and more fun i think it's more fun people say sega's deeper which i don't really get they say the attributes matter more for players uh okay um anyway i don't i don't care to like enter a huge debate because it's been done so much uh in the forums uh i think both games are are great i just i so prefer the super nintendo version it's just so much more fun i find yeah and that's fine because in you know, different strokes for different folks and um, I do know that there are some people that do well even in both sides. Was it uh, did Angry Jay win the competition on both sides at one time? Or he has he has won from some uh, Super Nintendo leagues uh, in the past for sure. He's definitely, um, if not the best, one of the two best. King Raf being the other one. Uh, they're both very good at both systems. But Angry Jay definitely like top top player in super nintendo i always um have trouble with them like super super close games we, we usually split like if we have a series that's awesome that you're able to transfer your skills from one uh, system to the next same name of the game but there's still some differences and one big one is the weight bug in genesis which makes some players like mario lemieux for instance in genesis to be um a more challenging player to use 
but I suspect in Super Nintendo he's just godlike. Am I correct in that? Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, I wouldn't say godlike, but he's definitely elite and one of the top, like, three forwards in the game. I mean, you could um, you could have McGilney or him. Um, you're not going to go wrong with either one. And then, you know, some guys prefer um, others, like, you know, Lindros with his size and his shot accuracy is, is deadly um, up front. Um, and then uh, I like uh, Cam Neely, actually. Some guys like Solani and Iserman. Um, so yeah, it's totally different. And like the weight bug isn't even something that I that I even mentioned when I was comparing the two systems. But that is one of the huge uh, differences, I suppose. Um, it's just something that we talk about so much. It didn't even it didn't even occur to me. Oh, I mentioned the weight bug. It, um, <laughs> it changes the game dra- dramatically in terms of who you're picking your your lineups which team is better than, than the other. So it, it creates, it just creates a different game uh, between the two systems. And not to say one is better than the, than the other, it's just, it's just different. And so it's something you have to definitely take into consideration when you're building a team in Genesis versus SNES. So <laughs> just, I don't know, it just seems interesting. One thing I've seen at least footage of is a poke check by the goalie. Is it, there a poke check that is actually in existence in the game or am I wrong? Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, you might be referring to. We, so we just saw a really funny thing that happened the other day, and it was posted on the Twitter, I think. Where that's um, where I saw it. Kelly Kelly Rudy of the Kings uh, poke checked Marty McSorley, his his teammate and defenseman, as he was skating by, and uh, the opposition picked up the puck and and promptly scored. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, the, uh, the goalies are um, not the smartest, I guess. Um, but yeah, there is a poke check and. Um, if you kind of bring the puck close enough to the goalie, he, he often will go for that poke check. And what that does is it kind of freezes the goalie for a second. So you can just kind of move around him and score. Um, but I think if you take control of the goalie, if you press that X button again, I think it poke checks, I think you can do it yourself if I'm not mistaken, but it's not something that people like to do. It's not very effective. It's just one more tool that's in the toolbox. And I, from what I, I don't think that's in Genesis. I'm honestly, I yeah. don't ever remember seeing a goalie do that. The EA flop, I've seen that, whatever you call it, the EA special where he's just diving everywhere. I've seen just about everything, but the poke check, like, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, yeah, I thought I've seen so, it all. But... So I'm not sure if you can activate it yourself. So don't quote me on that. But obviously, it isn't something that we really do. But guys do. Um, do tend to dive like with the goalie uh, from time to time. It's it can be effective. Like if if a guy's coming in on a breakaway, you can catch him off guard by just flopping with the dive. And um, it some guys do it, and it's rarely successful. The only guy I've ever seen that can do it consistently and make the save is uh, Mikhail, who you've probably heard of, who's the winner of like every every King of ninety four tournament that he ever entered. Uh, he would often just do the goalie dive and somehow stop it like 90% of the time and no one can really replicate that but guys do tend to tend to try but they usually get lit up are pass shots a big thing in the SNES they're not a big thing um they are a thing um so some guys do it um I think it's the mechanics of it are quite a bit different in super nintendo so usually um it's more so like a straight up or straight down pass that can catch the corner of the net um the diagonal pass shots i think are probably more common in in sega um and it's not really something that that guys try it might happen uh by fluke in super nintendo but um yeah some guys are getting quite good at pass shots in super nintendo personally i don't really attempt it um i don't see a real advantage um in super nintendo to attempting to do it um the shot is just as good for me um but the odd time like on a penalty shot if you just move off center a little bit you can fire a pass shot from like the blue line before the guy even knows what's going on so that'll work and uh slap shots as well like straight up slap shots are becoming more and more common in super nintendo some guys are starting to do them uh consistently quite well i guess we're using the the heavier slap shot guys like mckinnis and wilson and i frady and hall and they are but uh from what I've seen, it doesn't matter so much. Um, like a guy like Iafredi is good at it, yes. But a guy with like a four power, like or a sixty-five-ish uh, shot power, can can do it. Um, oh. 
uh, pretty much just as well. Thoughts about auto goalie versus manual? Do you prefer one versus the other? Um, I mean, auto goalie isn't even something that that anyone really considers. Um, <laughs> so I haven't, I don't know, I haven't seen auto goalie. Um, anyone use auto goalie in, in, in many years, I don't Do think. you take control of the goalie as, like uh, every opportunity or you prefer to have the, goal, the uh, AI do it as much as possible? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So like in game, like whether you let the auto goalie, you know, deal with it or if you take control yourself. Yeah. Um, it depends. So I do uh, definitely let the goalie handle it. Like, so if I have a defense, a big defenseman and I can kind of angle the forward off to one side of the net, then, you know, I can, I'll let the goalie handle it. Like if I know the shooter doesn't really have an angle, but um I will certainly take control of the goalie and uh, try and stack the pads. It seems to be a very effective save animation uh, in Super Nintendo. If you just kind of uh, um, stay still in the middle of the net and, and press the save button, you can usually get the pad stuck and it covers like 90% of the net. It's uh, It can be pretty frustrating for guys to, to get stopped by that. Um, but I find like with goalie control, definitely less is more. Like you don't want to get moving around because I think it was chaos actually um, that called the goalies in Super Nintendo. They're like floating bricks. So they kind of like, they have, you can feel the weight. And once you get moving one way, they kind of keep floating that way. And it's really hard to kind of reel them back in and get moving the other way, which I think is, is kind of good because I am, I've never been a a ice hockey goalie, but I imagine that's kind of what it's like wearing all that equipment you get going one way. It's hard to, to move back. Right. So, uh, so uh, I, I don't know. I think, um, I think they kind of nailed it with the floating brick um, control. <laughs> and even that applies to like, the lighter weight goalies, like the Andy Moogs and, and so forth, or the Bob Essens. Yeah. Yeah. There's So in Super Nintendo, like, you can't really tell the difference between the goalies. Um, really? Maybe, maybe that's what guys are talking about when they say there's more depth in Genesis. So in, in Super Nintendo, um, we have a saying, a saying, and it's man, F goalies. And you can imagine what the F stands yeah. for. Now, that came from the professor. I think that's his quote. And um, because no one no one cares about the goalies in Super Nintendo, like whether you're facing, uh, you know, Daniel Bertiome or Patrick Waugh, like you're, you're not even going to be able to tell the difference if you watch a game with those two goalies in that. Um, it doesn't really matter. So like when we do a SNES draft league, um, the first few years, guys were drafting Waugh and Belfour like round one, round two. Um, and then after a couple of seasons, we realized it doesn't matter. And so they wouldn't, they don't go till like round six when guys need goalies. So, uh, and it's consistent. So like the whole league of like 25 guys, not one of them will draft Roy or Belfort till the, uh, the sixth round. It's pretty funny. Wow. That goes to show you like in the SNES, how valuable a goalie is, even a top tier goalie, like Roy and Belfort, they're just, you guys don't, value them as much for obvious reasons because they don't have much value in that's That's interesting yeah yeah, that's that just goes to show the two differences between the the two games now i again like i haven't played the i've never played the the snes i gotta give that a shot and see what it's like and i must say i think like they're like you were saying i think there is a difference between the the heavy versus light goalies maybe so like a guy Uh like terrari i like terrari actually um He's good. Like maybe he moves a bit quicker, but he can get pushed around a bit more than a guy like who's big, like Barrasso, maybe. Um, but like it's, it's extremely subtle and it really doesn't matter. Where do you rank Jersey as a team? Because in Genesis, they're, you know, meh at best. But I'm curious, you know, we, we, you like Terreri, um, Scott Stevens is, you know, is a heavy hitter. I'm curious, wh- where does Jersey rank in SNES NHL 94? Uh, Jersey's probably kind of middle of the pack, but mm-hmm. for me, they're like upper, definitely upper middle. Um, I, I like big players and I like hitting a lot. Um, so they're perfect for that because you can, you can stack them with big guys, right? Stevens Fatisov is probably like one of my favorite players in the game, maybe most underrated defenseman. Um, and then you can put Riche who's big and pretty skilled. And then you got Claude Lemieux, who's just a beast, uh, in Super Nintendo, he's like, quite valuable uh because he just wrecks guys he's big and he can skate um and then just put whoever on the other wing stasny or Stasny, or Galaxy Mac. so yeah. um at home 
at home, I think they're an elite team. On the road, they can struggle at times, like passes bouncing off skates and that sort of thing. But I like they, I like New Jersey. They got a huge home ice advantage. I don't know about the advantages. Like uh, I just know te- teams on the road tend to um, struggle a little bit more with the stick handling. So like passes will be bouncing off skates a little bit more on the road. I find guys might be more likely to be cold and just like a little bit sluggish moving their shots right. missing the net and that sort of thing. Gotcha. Now I, I know that deeks are a huge thing in the SNES version, right? Is that true? Yeah, a lot of goals are scored. Um, just deacon, deacon the defenseman, deacon the goalies. Um, guys have gotten pretty good at defending that. I mean, you're still though going to get the odd man breaks where you can pull those moves. Um, but yeah, certainly it's it's deep goals and a lot of one timers. Like uh, guys tend to average maybe um, two or some guys more than two one timer goals uh, per game. Um, and I guess the rest of them are mainly deep goals. Uh, some, I guess the odd rebound goal and, uh, the odd slapper pass shot, very rare. Um, so yeah, a bit different than Genesis where you're scoring from what I understand on just like straight sort of slappers and, and floaters in the A specials, I don't yeah. know, whatever that is. <laughs> so then how does one get better with Deeks? Would you say that they should be playing mostly online or mostly against a computer or maybe splitting them 50 50 because it's in terms of like improving your, your game it seems like then improving your ability to deke is going to elevate your game so what is your suggestion for somebody to improve that skill level so my suggestion is um you got to play lots against the computer to start so if you can go back in time to be like a 10 to 13 year old kid where you have no responsibilities just play nhl 94 all the time and practice deep goals and then when you have a bit of confidence you can play uh against live competition and um that's where you're really gonna take off and uh and learn how to do things because because you have to know how to deek um not only the auto goalie obviously but um manual goalie is huge in super nintendo so you got to learn uh what guys tend to do uh with the manual goalie and then it's a a bit of the the head games right where uh, it's like a chess match like well you think i'm gonna do this but i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna do this instead so you know spin spin deeks and uh non deeks and triple quadruple deeks and uh circle back around across the blue line and then come back a minute later and rag the puck and yeah there's some guys that are just insanely good at deeks but um if that's all they're doing they're going to get shut down like uh, so then they have to learn uh, different tricks and uh, some uh, one-timers and uh, various things coming out of the corner and whatnot and what's the best way to actually attack an opponent for the most part i know every opponent is different but is it just an all-out attack or do you have to be methodical and just pick and choose when to to go ahead and just slowly work your way forward like what what's your your approach for um attacking an an opponent well that's a good question um i would i would say i don't know my approach is kind of like i like to think in my head it's controlled aggression so like you got to pick your spots so kind of like you know feel them out you know maintain the puck if there's an open space you got to you know take it right away and uh try some aggressive passing you know if guys making a break for the blue line um try and hit them with the long the long pass um i like to do a thing where uh if i win the draw in my own zone i immediately just do flip the puck you know like just like the toss the puck end over end down to the other end and then i just race up there with my winger and like I don't know, four out of five times I can usually grab that puck out of the air and then all of a sudden I've got like an on-man rush. So I don't know, uh, you, you need a, you need to vary your attack against the top players for sure. Like guys tend to kind of clog the middle of the of the zone and the, the front of their net. So in that case, you kind of almost have to draw them out. So <laughs> you got to get in there and maybe... Um, loop around back of the net there's lots of good ice back there 
so use it you know and then they, you kind of use the net as like a barrier and if they chase you then all of a sudden you can come out front the other side so i don't know it's uh i could go on and on about offensive strategy go on but, uh, people want to hear about this this is something I, i'm sure this is one of the more interesting parts that people want to dive into because this is something they're going to learn like this is something i'm going to learn i'm going to listen to this yeah, and apply yeah. it because i i, I was I'm going to put hundreds and hundreds of hours into SNES so I can finally play you, but maybe I could yeah. chop off a few hours so I could get better. So like, yeah, <laughs> keep going with some of the, some of the tactics and, and how to improve because this is, this is really important and very interesting stuff. So yeah, I mean, well, that's just it. So, so basically just, um, when you get the puck, um, immediately look at your options, right? So, uh, if there's open ice, take it. If there's a guy streaking forward, uh, hit him with the pass and if nothing's open um, just loop back and like you can kind of if their if their defense is sitting back in front of their own net you can kind of almost like play with the puck like the CPU controlled teammates of his they might come at you but you can basically just like deke around them and then you got sort of an odd man rush and then they might that might draw them away from their net and then all of a sudden you can you know kick it out front or whatever um anyways it's really hard to uh to talk about it yeah. uh, verbally without uh playing a game but we should we should well, uh we should let's get one going right now time. yeah let's do sure. it right now <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> so then these tactics that you just discussed are they also applicable against the computer can somebody practice these these aggressive passing these long passing drawing out the defenseman yeah. from the front of the net somebody could do this against a computer to try to perfect those type of skills yeah for sure yeah and you know it's definitely a good thing to to play against the computer every once in a while and if there's a certain um move or a certain you know type of goal uh that you that you've seen other guys score that you want to practice then that's that's the way to do it right um you could even do like a save state in a particular situation and then just keep uh keep loading it over and over so you can get the uh, get the timing right or get the 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 controls right to try and nail it and then then bring it out in, in live competition now the attributes i want to hear your ranking of the attributes <sighs> which is the top tier which is the best attribute and then go from there because i want to hear and maybe talk a little bit about them too because i'm curious how you score these and for me i want to see how they compare to what i think they are in genesis so we're talking yeah so we're talking super nintendo so weight is actually huge so like mm. you couldn't just say okay i want all the heaviest guys right like it's obviously a mixture of things but weight is definitely one of the first things that i look at and and that's just me right from my perspective like there's other guys that are good with with little guys um that are kind of like water bugs and they do the the deeks and whatnot but like, i like i like beef you know i like i like the big guys that are just gonna get in the way and uh make make your life difficult and uh you're not gonna McSorley isn't a good well. player for you McSorley is good but he is almost a little bit too sluggish for me i find he, <laughs> he can get caught uh, flat-footed on uh, gotcha. on defense but yeah i mean I, I have him ranked fairly high on my list of d so so yeah so wade is up there and then for me um in particular there's a few ratings where i like them to have almost like a minimum like a baseline uh or else i just don't want them on my team so like for a four rating which you might have heard other guys talk about is kind of like around 65. i think that's really important for things like uh stick handling um because if it's lower than that they're going to be booting passes so the puck's just going to be like bouncing off their skate um mm -hmm. half the games you you play um so that's really important so wait uh a minimum amount of stick handling and then they have to have a good shot so like shot accuracy i think is uh is really key for uh for picking corners and one timers and then uh shot power um as well i like them to have like a minimum four three is okay in some cases but uh four is good um passing i don't think it matters so much like i don't see a huge difference between a you know gretzky versus a guy with like a two or three passing um i don't really know what the passing reading does in super nintendo like the pass is just they seem to be accurate pretty much regardless of who's doing it in my opinion um the offensive defensive awareness um 
I don't look at that so much. Um, I think a higher offensive awareness means they tend to go to the net a little bit more and like they kind of fill lanes better if there's an open lane in the offensive zone, I think, but I don't really know. Um, so yeah, I, I, I guess I, I, what I'm saying is I would rank um, weight and the shot attributes uh, pretty high. I didn't talk about skating. Um, I think again, they kind of, I like them to have like a minimum four for both speed and agility, but if they're a bit lower on either of those, they're still um, usable in most cases. And I think I rank agility a little bit higher than than speed, actually. Like Fatisov is only a two speed, but I find him to be like one of the most effective defensive defensemen because he's still agile and he's huge. He's got the stick handling. He's got checking rating, which is another rating I didn't talk about. Um, we're not entirely sure what that does. Uh, I think in Super Nintendo, it does affect um, how effective a guy's hit is. Um, but others say all it does is affect like how often they tend to check, like when they're CPU controlled. But I don't know, a guy like Alf Samuelson, like he's, he's only, he weighs like 200, 204 pounds, but he's got a high checking rating and I find like he just kind of dummies guys. So I think the checking rating does matter because um, you get guys with low checking ratings and like you're, you're hammering guys and they're just, it's not even affecting them at times. So yeah. So, so oh, yeah, sorry. that's a kind of my overview of the ratings. I don't know if I, if I rank them in any format at all. No, but, you know. you've, you've outlined which ones are more important to you. So then, in terms of the code, I'm not sure your technical background. I don't, I don't want to get into that in case you don't want to, to get to dox yourself. But um, have you ever reviewed the code of the game to figure out maybe what some of these attributes have done? I'm curious if you've gone down that rabbit hole, considering how much time you put into playing the game. Well, now this kind of feels like a job interview. I don't, I don't have experience <laughs> um, coding or reviewing the code, um, so <laughs> I'm not the best guy to talk to about that. But uh, you know, I read, I read what other guys have done and and follow that pretty closely. So, like, I know you've talked to uh, to Chaos and King Raf. Those guys, those guys know all that stuff, and Angry Jay as well. Um, so, and the code yeah. is totally different on, on the SNES. That's why I'm coming to you. Maybe you've dived I, into this. And I'm in a I'm in a very narrow lane here. I just play the game and I play Super Nintendo. So I don't play Genesis and I don't do the coding and I don't create ROMs. So it's a, it's a pretty niche um, interview here, and you might have lost um, a lot of uh, uh, listeners already. So sorry about that. <laughs> now, in terms of the ROMs, which one are your favorite ROMs? I, I see some of them, like one for instance, three versus three pond hockey. Is that one that? Yeah. What is that? That's a new one. That's a new one. Um, I think uh, I named uh, Kids Kids Wasted just uh, created that one. And so we have a league going. I'm Hartford. So I actually put Zarly Zalapski as my center uh, for the Whalers. And he's doing a great job because of his Wait, size. wait, 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 wait. Uh, are you able to, because I know in 95, you can move defensemen up to the forwards and forwards back to the defensemen. In Super Nintendo, do you have the ability to do that? Or are you locked in defensemen have to play defense? And in this three versus three pawn hockey is just, you know, an edit to that. I'm curious, how is it? How are you locked into playing defense and defense and five versus five yeah. Super Nintendo? Yeah, unfortunately, in the regular ROM, you're locked into uh, okay. defensemen playing as defensemen. But in this ROM, um, they they made it so that you can move the defensemen up. So like Boston, you can put Ray Bork, you know, up front <laughs> with Neely and Oates, which is pretty sick. Um so yeah, I, I do I you know I like I like that ROM. It's fun, but like for me, I like the classic ROM, five versus five. Um I like to have, you know, five skaters aside. I like a lot of a lot of bodies on the ice, more hitting, um, more sort of structure, more sort of real hockey sort of action. Um but uh probably if we're talking like my favorite ROM that's been created, my favorite league, it's probably the the draft league so like we do it probably two a year um where we all you know draft our own team and that's that's a ton of fun for can sure. a new player join into that or do they have to have some sort of like minimum skill level to actually join in i don't think there's any minimum skill i think you, you just have to be um you know an established player that has shown that they uh, can play the game online and they will play their games so uh, i don't run that league so i cannot uh, confirm or deny that you uh, would be able to join the league if you applied but um 
I think that you probably could. Um, I think there's an A and a B league. So there's the A league is like super stacked, like all the all the best of the best um, players, and then the the B league is is I guess everyone else, and there's still some really top players in there as well, and uh, so much fun because uh, um, you know you can draft. I can draft all my big guys with good shots, and other guys can draft the super super fast guys with uh, you know the good the good stick handling and and uh, whatever else they they care about now taking out humility from this next question where would you rank yourself in terms of where you stand in, compared to the other snes players like would you say you're number one number five number ten like it, like be honest and you know take humility out of this i'm curious where you see yourself in terms of ranking in top x amount of players where do you stand Okay, uh, I'm definitely top 10, I'm going to say, um, without a doubt, I'm top 10. Uh, I mean, if you if you, there's a few different ranking systems, right? So there's the live tournament ranking system. I was as high as second, I think, last year, and then I had a bad tournament uh, last fall, and I've dropped, I think I'm, I don't know, four or five. Um, the online rankings right now, I am number one. I have been for a um, couple months now. But those change um, quite frequently. So who knows? Uh, I mean, tomorrow I might drop if I played some games tonight and lost to a lower rank player, for example. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say I'm definitely top 10. Uh, if I was to be bold, I would say I'm top five. Um, and on any given night, I might be number one. Like yeah. I have won, I've won, you know, some big tournaments and some online leagues. Um, but the thing about Super Nintendo is um, there is about, I don't know, a dozen guys that could be the best player <laughs> in the world on any given night. Like it really, it really, there's a bit of luck. There's a bit of randomness. There's obviously skill, but there's also, you know, how are you feeling that day? Like my, my gameplay totally uh, is determined by how I'm feeling that day. Like if I, if I had a bad day at work or something's on my mind, and I'm like, oh, I want to play some 94. Maybe that'll cheer me up. And then I probably just get destroyed. And then it's just a downward spiral. <laughs> but if I'm like, if I'm feeling really good about myself, maybe I exercise that week or the week before, um, <laughs> then um, I I might just like destroy guys. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It's so it's so competitive in Super Nintendo because there's so many there's so many good players. Like you never know who's who's gonna win these days. I, somebody told me, I think it might have been Chaos, I could be wrong, but he mentioned that when you lose in Genesis, there's a lot of bitchiness out there in terms of there's an excuse why you lost, and there's you know people always talk about it, but in SNES, for whatever reason, when somebody loses, meh, you lost. You, you lost because you didn't play well, and that was it. There's, so it seems like the way it was described to me is just like the SNES community is more accepting of a loss versus the Genesis community. Do you find that to be the case? Do you find people in your community when they lose a match, there's there's no hard feeling? It's just I lost a match. The other guy was better than me, or you know, it just it happens. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a, it's a, it is it is a lovely it is a lovely group of guys on the Super Nintendo side. I have to say. Um, you know, I, I, I obviously I see some of the the Discord on the uh, from the Genesis side, like on the forums or in the Discord itself, um, and uh, it has. I think I think it's pretty good now, but I think it has in the past been a little bit toxic. Uh, dare I say, it's been uh, a little bit uh, confrontational and uh, a lot of emotions and uh, expletives strewn about um, on the Super Nintendo side. Um, you know, we obviously are passionate about it and we all are very competitive, but like, I think there's a ton of respect and like acknowledgement that we're all like middle-aged men playing a video game here and uh, let's just have some fun. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a great, uh, it's a great community definitely on the Super Nintendo side. And, and like I said, I think the Genesis side is, is, is good as well and i and i love seeing those guys uh at the live tournaments as well they're they're a lot of fun you guys are acting like gentlemen i think i might have to switch sides to bring some bitchiness over to the to the snes side so just to, to sort of stir the pot and bring some uh toxic yeah you'll, <laughs> toxic. you'll, you'll get you'll get weeded out you'll get weeded out pretty quickly <laughs> you will you will not feel welcome on the super nintendo side if you're bringing that negative energy now in terms you've played for years and years i want to hear like Give me some of your top 
highlights that you've had in your career oh gosh. while playing the game? Oh my gosh. So, um, well, okay. <laughs> There's been, you know, the King of 94 tournament, which is like yes. the big one. So um, I've had some very low, low lights in that tournament. And I've had a very high highlight as well. Um, so my highlight was, was I guess it was fall 2022 um, in Toronto and went down for the weekend and my wife let me go and take a business class on via rail and i had a caesar and it was awesome because i was going away on my own for the weekend to toronto to play video games with friends from the internet and um there was a two versus two tournament um i think the friday night and by the way i was staying at my my parent-in-law's uh, house in Mississauga. To, I had it to myself because they were in Ottawa taking care of my kids. So it was sweet. And there was a two versus two tournament and I played with my buddy Anatar and we won the uh, first place in that. Got the trophies for that. So that was fun. And then I did a Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball Super Nintendo tournament and I won that one. Uh, it was super tough. Uh, and then the next day was the Super Nintendo King of 94 and i had a terrible sort of round robin um i lost a couple games and i went in as i don't know the 11th or 13th seed into the playoffs and uh i actually got i got pretty far and i got mercyed by dangler who you might have heard of he's a very good player uh i got mercyed by him two games in a row where he was up by six goals and uh we quit the game early two games in a row and i went to the loser side i won against a couple other really top players and i came back and i beat him in the best of five final so i won all three tournaments i entered that weekend and i came home on the train uh you know had another caesar and i had a luggage <laughs> full of trophies and it was like top five weekend of my life it was wow. unbelievable can i mention one other highlight which is online i'll just mention really quickly i think it was fall it was fall 2018 i want to say maybe 2019 and i was in the finals for the classic a and i was down in the series to a guy named schwartz three games to one and i came back tied the series and then game seven um i was boston he was chicago i was down by three goals with one minute left in the third period oh my gosh and i scored three goals in one minute to tie the game and then i won it in overtime to win the championship and, you broke uh, his heart man you broke his I and, yeah, he, he he hasn't really played much online since then and he's an awesome guy and i i just i worry that i did break his heart um but unfortunately like that wasn't streamed we weren't set up to stream wasn't recorded so all we have is the box score and i think i have a recording of the winning goal somewhere but uh my low light is probably um might be the most interesting story because it was in Vegas and it was for the biggest um, prize money ever. Um, and a guy uh, who doesn't even play online or didn't play online at the time came with his crew from Vancouver and I made a run to the finals and we went to overtime in the winner takes all match. And I hit the post and oh. then he came down and i had the puck with my goalie and i passed i came out of my net and did a goalie giveaway and he won he won the king of 94 in vegas for the most prize money ever and uh he there's like a picture of him in the hockey news he was interviewed <laughs> by cbc um so that was like i i that really burned for years so like it just made it so much better when i finally won the king of 94 in uh, in 22. Well, you know, you got, I don't want to say a consolation prize. I think you won up them because you're here on the NHL 94 podcast and he is not. That's it. So That's think it. about that. <laughs> so the millions of people it. that are going to tune into this are going to be uh, able to listen to this story. And uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I guess it's a good time to transition. I got a, a few questions I'm going to be throwing at you, some rapid fire questions. And um, I want to see your, your the answers to them. So uh, yeah. Is okay. Here we go. Is Flurry Theron Flurry a usable player in SNES ninety four? Oh yeah, it's certainly usable. Um, he's I would say he's a starter on Calgary. Um, 
but I don't, I don't love him. Like if I'm going into a draft league, I'm not thinking I, I, I need to draft Theo Fleury. Um, cause he's obviously a small guy, but he's not like overly fast or overly dynamic, at least in super Nintendo. So, um, that combination of being small and like not overly fast is kind of like the death knell in Super Nintendo. Like for me, I don't, I don't really see much value in those guys. Stock SNES controller or aftermarket? Oh, stock for sure. I, I actually stocked, I literally stocked up on um, a few Super Nintendo original uh, controllers. So I think I have like five or six of them just, you know, to have. Just in case in case there's none available in 20 years whatever did you ever get the snes mini i do i have one yes i have the nes and the snes mini um they're like in in a storage somewhere i, <laughs> I don't mod like them i guess <laughs> because it's very popular to mod those and just put whatever roms you want on there so you can put like nhl 94 and whatever yeah i'm a bit of a purist so i don't tend to mod things and like i said i'm not into like the techy uh coding stuff so modding to me is just like i don't that doesn't sound like safe to me that's fair uh, aside from nhl 94 what's the best game on the snes oh um that is a tricky one i mean if you're talking sports um I might go with my, as I mentioned already a couple of times, Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball. Um, but, uh, ooh, that is, uh, this is rapid fire, eh? Okay. Um, oh, no, you, you could uh, you take time on this. I don't give it. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Super so, Mario Kart. That's a good game. That's a, I only wish that they were able to make it so you could play more than two two people on it. I know it's, you know, there there is some controller addition, like some uh, add-on you could do. Did you hook up the five controllers? I think that's what it is for the Super Nintendo. You can. I have the um, like the adapter for five players. I don't know if uh, Mario Kart. Uh, it doesn't. It's only not, two no, players no, no, maximum. No. Yeah, no. And I wish they they enabled it. I don't know because I guess uh, technical limitations for putting four or five different you know players on screen would have been challenging. But you know what i'm just going to segue really quickly into that have you ever played a game in nhl 94 that had five players or is that possible uh four players yes uh five players no not that i know of so there's no oh. there's no capability out of the box for that i i honestly don't know so well, maybe we'll have to edit this out <laughs> <laughs> favorite opponent favorite opponent to play against Oh, wow. Um, there's like half a dozen guys that I love playing against because I like they're the, the best guys and they're all so good. Um, but if I had to pick one, it would be my buddy uh, Anatar from Montreal um, because um, I think I played the most games against him probably um, all time. Like if you look at the, the site records for head to head matchups. Um, I think I have the most games played for Super Nintendo all time, and then uh, it might be him next. It might be Dangler. I'm not sure, but I'm going to say Anatar because he's also my two my two v two partner. Ah, that was my next question. Who, if you had to, to pick somebody to, who's going to be a partner in two v two, who is it? There you go. So you just answered that as a two for one question, I guess. So then the next one is the worst player to play against. You oh my gosh! You despise playing to, to, to play against. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, it's got to be Mikhail just because he, he's just so intimidating. The guy just wins every tournament he uh, he enters. Um, but he's a lovely guy. Um, if I had to pick the worst, like the most annoying, like not that they're like overly good, but just annoying to play. I guess just like anyone that that keeps pausing and... Uh, and like, okay, I gotta be be right back in one minute, you know, mid game. Any any that sort of thing, I I don't I don't really enjoy that. Um, I mean, if it happens once in a while if with good reason, fine. But uh, if that's like your thing, um, no, I don't I don't enjoy that. Yeah, uh, it, it takes away from the flow of the game too. They could just oh, sure. I, I'm with you on that. <laughs> Favorite team to play with? Uh, Boston for sure. I I love that team just uh the size like neely's one of my favorite players and then like oats and ruzichka is one of the most underrated players in snes ah 
worst play worst team to play with who's you the one you despise the most Ooh, with? i mean there's the expansion teams but they're actually kind of fun so my most despised team is dallas stars they are just the worst like they have speed but their defense is terrible and they just miss the net constantly and they can't hit they're just so frustrating it's just like goes against my style and yet i have been them like in leagues and tournaments and things and it just always regret it <laughs> there's someone that there's a draw from that team and i know what you mean um most overrated player um so, i'm not talking about human player i'm talking about the, the actual oh yeah yeah sorry the most the me. most overrated player human player um <laughs> the most overrated player in the game um uh i i think any any small guy that doesn't skate well usually gets overrated so there's a few of them um but most notably maybe maybe lafontaine like he's he's mm -hmm. got like a his overall rating is i want to say it's like 90 something um but like he's um he's small and he has no shot um he's not like overly fast either he's got he's got like offensive awareness to handling passing okay but like in super nintendo um He's just not very useful for me at all. And he gets drafted, um, I think, usually like first round or high second round. And I have him, I'd have him like down a couple rounds. Um, Luke Robitaille is also, uh, for whatever reason, he's he's really frustrating in Super Nintendo. A lot of guys don't even have him in their starting lineup with LA. They go Sandstrom, Carson, and uh, Gretzky. Just because Robitaille... For whatever reason, he's got a great shot rating, but it misses the net. Like I don't know if there's some something wrong in the code. And then like he's not overly big or fast either. So um, yeah, I don't love him. Brian Leach as well on defense, not good. Oh, he's got super high agility, right? Yeah, and nothing else really in Super Nintendo. Like he's not he's not really usable. <laughs> Most underrated player. Oh, I've got a few. Like I mentioned, Rizichka, um, mm -hmm. Claude Lemieux. Um, but if I had to pick one forward, one defenseman, I would say up front, Jimmy Carson. I have him in my top. I think he's like, if I rank, I have a ranking of all my players. And I think he's like 10th for, tenth best forward for me. Um, he's just, there's something like a, he's like a perfect mix. He's kind of like a bit above average across the board for everything and he's got high shot accuracy and um he's just like he's always been really good for me so he's up there and then on defense like i said fatisov he's just got the huge size and hitting um and then um luke richardson luke, luke richardson, richardson. holy so cow good. he's like one of the best defensive defensemen like that that you've never heard of uh in uh super nintendo uh 94 he's uh he gets drafted like really low in our leagues i don't know like sixth seventh round or something but he uh he skates decent for a massive guy and he's got high hitting defensive awareness so that's all you need huh. like i'm not i'm not trying to go up and score with my defenseman i just gotta you know stuff guys and then get the puck out so i like him is housley a usable player yeah for sure um he is small it's not ideal, but he's so skilled. Like he's one of the best skaters in the game, right? Um, and so he's just like a water bug up there. So you can you can just take him and like he's almost untouchable at times, right? So if you have a guy like Silani that you're trying to set up, um, you can use Housley just to you know skate all over the place until something opens up. And you can use the poke check on defense too with the small defenseman. So you can take guys down that way. Scott Mellenby, does he have any use whatsoever Ooh, in a game just too too slow and stiff no he's not uh, useful he's like a poor man's rick tocket and like tocket is not useful either because he's so slow <laughs> now bob kodowski would you start him or is he an insta start in your in your books on the sense he's got to yeah. be a starter <laughs> he's the only guy with a <laughs> decent shot yeah yeah for sure i got him and him and turgeon they can be they can be decent up front Turgeon on Genesis, I, he's pretty respectable, I find. Um, yeah, he's reason. not bad. He's he's yeah. a lefty, and then you got Kudelski as the righty. Nice little combo there. Um, I actually met Bobby Kudelski about ten years ago at like a Senators um, anniversary thing or something. He was just walking down the red carpet, and we did the whole like 
high five, half high five, half handshake. So I had a little chat with them. <laughs> All right. You got to get them to sign the the, uh, the box to the game. Just to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I got uh, um, I got Larmer, I got Steve Larmer and Glenn Anderson to sign my cartridge actually because I got to play real hockey with them with Mikey McBrien once. I that saw that. So you were part of that. You were involved. Yeah. In that? I was oh. in the documentary. They interviewed me a couple of times and he claims he lost the audio. I don't know um, what happened there. <laughs> Sorry, Mikey. But uh, I'm in um, I'm in like five or six scenes in the background throughout that documentary. I was on the ice with Larmer and Anderson. No, and, no I, uh, we, we're not going to end it. Like, we're not going to just gloss over this because uh, Larmer, like he was an Iron Man in the NHL, right? He set a oh. record. At, I think he broke Doug Jarvis's record in terms of uh, consecutive games played, yeah, and yeah. Anderson was like, it, he had a mean streak when he played. He, we, you give him the puck as fast as can be, and he always drove to the net, and just it, it, that was his move. Just always, so like, I want to hear that the story about you playing hockey with them because those two guys, yeah. they're they're legends. Like, come on, man, let's not gloss yeah. over this. Talk about yeah, it. that was like that was another kind of like life experience to be able to get to do that. I think I don't, uh, Mikey, kind of announced it on the forum i think that he wanted to film something in toronto he was looking for a few guys to like get on the ice and and do it and it was only announced like i think days before and luckily like i have some flexibility and i took the day off work and i uh, i think i took the train down to toronto for the day to um st mike's arena and um glenn anderson and steve larmer were there so i'm in the dressing room like getting suited up to play hockey with these guys who are in the hall of fame i mean larmer's not but he I actually he should be um he was and a then, very good player yes he really was if you if you look at like he was probably the best defensive winger like in the 80s potentially like he he could have won a selkie if they looked at wingers uh, a, a little bit more um and then the iron man thing and then just like being such a consistent scorer and he's like a, a, he's a beauty like i got to talk to him a little bit and he's he's super funny humble guy like he made a few jokes at the leafs expense actually a couple times which is everyone can make I know a joke you don't want to hear yeah no, I, I, hey man <laughs> they haven't won a cup but, since 67 uh, so that's a long yeah time. but like just to meet glenn anderson who like i remember like as a little kid like seeing him you know fly around with the oilers like winning stanley cups um and his backhand was like harder than my slap shot which was um pretty <laughs> amazing but um they had me they had me explain to Steve Larmer and Glenn Anderson how to score a one-timer goal in NHL 94 and that was a little bit that felt a little bit cringe for me to <laughs> be explaining to these guys who have scored like a thousand goals in the NHL multiple Stanley Cups uh, how to score a one-timer goal in a video game but uh, it was it was so much fun like to, to be on the ice with those guys um, and uh, they're great guys and like just to see the skill level and uh, obviously like still love the game and they put on their rangers jerseys from you know when they won the cup together and were like reminiscing and i was just like in the background and can just uh, fly on the wall it was it was such a great experience so like i i really appreciate what mikey did for you know for the community and just like presenting these types of opportunities to me and others it was, it was awesome can anderson still fly at that time oh yeah oh yeah like effortless like yeah he 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 still has it for sure. I think he yeah. could still play in you know some European leagues for sure. Yeah, <laughs> shoot, I, that must have been like a just an excellent experience to see those guys and and to actually interact with them and, and play with them. And I'm jealous. I can't even skate though, so I can't really do anything. Even <laughs> if I wanted to, I couldn't participate. I guess I I before we could wrap things up, I got one final question for you. If you could change one thing about the game nhl 94 what would you change Ooh, just one um okay even a few if you want to change a few <laughs> go ahead i mean like, what what would you change to make it better um probably if it was just one thing i'm not gonna say fighting because yes i i like the fighting in 93 but um it's it's like it's, it doesn't need to be part of the game right um i think maybe just like the addition of a of a season mode and if I can like expand on that one thing, the season mode would include, you know, detailed stat tracking, uh, like trades and awards at the end of the season and all that sort of stuff as well. You know, I, I said that would be the last question I'm going to 
I lied. I'm gonna add one more. Did you ever play the PC version of NHL '94? Because that had yeah. season mode and you could trade and stuff like that. I don't know if they had awards at the end of the year, but they checked off a few of the boxes you mentioned. So I'm wondering if you played that before. I did. I picked up. Um, I picked up a version of the NHL uh, NHL hockey for PC. Um, I think it was around '98, but it was labeled as like a like an EA greatest hits or something like that. It was like a gold box. So it was almost like a reprinting, I think, of the 94 or 95 version. And yeah, I was I was pretty excited, like, because the pictures on the box, I was like, this looks a lot like NHL 94 for Super Nintendo. But it says here you have like four lines and it shows like all this fancy game presentation. So sure enough, you know, it had all that stuff. So I was pretty excited, like when I loaded that through DOS or whatever it is. And um and set it up because it's it was similar to the SNES version. Um, it was the gameplay. I don't think was quite as smooth, but like it was definitely a little bit different. But it had some extra features. Like it had the four lines, and it had like better game presentation. I think it had create a player because I remember having some Senators players at the time. I created like you know, Dackle and lambert and bruce gardner and all these random guys i I had in the game and uh, i played that quite a bit i feel like the referee was on the ice too and maybe you could hit him but i might have dreamt that (laughs) well i guess that's it for the show before i sign things off any last words any comments anything you want to say before we uh wrap things up you could chirp anyone too you know the floor is yours you could (laughs) Go yeah, ahead. no, I, I'm not going <laughs> to chirp anyone, um, but uh, I, I really should have thought about this because I knew you were going to ask this. So all I want to say is thanks to you for doing this. Like I, I've i always wanted to, I love listening to podcasts. I've always wanted to just somehow listen to more NHL 94 and, and just think about it more when I'm unable to play it. So um, really appreciate that you're doing this and that you invited me on as a guest. So thank you, Lynn. No problem. Yeah, and you're a part of it. You're now you're part of the NHL ninety four history, the NHL ninety four podcast history, that is. So it's sweet. A pleasure having you on and we'll have you back on it again. Um I have some plans moving forward and um you'll be invited back. So this this has been awesome. Thanks so much for coming on. Awesome. So uh, yeah, I'll see you uh, online. We'll play uh Super Nintendo NHL ninety four sometime. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So for everybody else that is tuning in, listening, watching, keep your stick on the ice and your controllers plugged in.